Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, I took control of Pooh and he completed the final stage of his Moo training. He meditated on the Spire of Nothingness to become the Grand Master. And now that he has realized a new level of meditation, he can join the cho other chosen three to become the famous four, Ness, Polly, Jeff, and Pooh. I am Earthbound. Hear me roar. I am Earthbound. Bro. <laughs> well, that, go that talking about the ancestor and his meditation ha leads me to talk about something. When I recorded that episode, I was kind of wondering, does that ancestor have any significance? Is it just the designers being all like, Pooh is Asian and he's the grand master of meditation. Of... Sama meditation. But no, I realized for the first time that the ancestor has a significance of his own. The goal of Pooh's training was for him to be able to eliminate all distractions, to focus on nothing, and thus become nothing, which would allow him to focus more intently on any task he would have at hand, whether that be using his PSI, which he has honed over the course of his life. Because you can see, he has a lot more PSI abilities at his age than Ness did at the beginning of the game. Even though he doesn't have that big of a level advantage on Ness that over the first episode version of Ness. So that's interesting, but his process of focusing on nothing, formerly, I'd believed that he was meditating, and because of that meditation, he was approached by his ancestor to endure the final trial. But that wasn't it in my opinion. What his ancestor was, was Pooh himself, phasing out the distractions. First, let's look at what was removed from Pooh. First was, were the outer things, like his, his legs, then his arms. Then, things that allowed him to focus on other things, his hearing. So he's gradually ignoring all these things, eliminating them from existence in his mind. Next is his sight which is another distraction. And finally, his mind himself, because focusing on nothingness is in fact counterintuitive because you're not doing nothing. You're focusing on something. You're focusing on nothing. So it's technically impossible for you to be able to focus on nothing while you still have your brain. So he eliminated that. He stopped thinking. And so that, that ancestor was Pooh's consciousness trying to reach this new level. It was not him reaching a new level and then encountering his ancestor. I just thought that was very interesting. It's It actually has significance instead of Earthbound just being completely random and quirky, though it is at times. I am proud. You have completed your Moo training. There is nothing more to teach you from the Holy Writings. Prince Pooh. I shall relay a message to you from eternity. The evil entity that controls all wickedness is preparing for the greatest struggle of all time. The only ones that can challenge the entity are three boys and one girl. One named Ness is the leader of the four. One of the boys is you, Prince Pooh. Now that you've completed your training, search out Ness at once. For all beings, for the Earth herself, I pray for growth in the might of the four. Pooh's level is now 16. Oh baby, offense went up by 4. Oh baby, defense went up by 5. Speed went up by 2. Vitality went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. HP went up by 14. PP went up by 5. Pooh realized the power of shield beta. Pooh's level is now 17. HP went up by 2. PP went up by 1. Pooh realized the power of teleport alpha. Pooh's level is now 18. Oh baby, offense went up by 3. Defense went up by 1. HP went up by 2. Who realized the power of teleport beta, which he will use this new form of teleport to reach the chosen three. My name is Pooh. I am the one who will fight beside you. I am the servant of Ness. I will obey Ness. Ness, my life is in your hands. <laughs> Who joined you? Who joined you? Finally, the game caught up with my commentary. Look at this! The only way we can have a bigger 
uh, group than this is if we have a teddy bear, and that will be absolutely insane. And we can do like the the Congo dance. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk to the woman who drugged us, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I can no longer make magic cakes, but it doesn't mad matter because now I'm selling magic tarts, which taste even better than magic cakes. I only have this. Magic tart. If memory serves, this is a consumable that restores about 50 PP. My memory is hazy since I've only played Earthbound once before, though, to be fair, I have seen a Let's Play of it and two live streams of the entire game. So, I think that I am pretty good judge of Earthbound. Alright, now that we have Pooh, the game branches out in three, yeah, you heard that correctly, three different directions. We can get, um, a Your Sanctuary location that's back in Foreside. There is another one that we saw at, uh, Scr not Scrub, at Delam, which we can teleport back, no, 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 we can teleport back to Delam using Alpha or Beta, and there is a Your Sanctuary location there. Or, we can move on to Scaraba itself. And I'm going to be doing sort of all three at once. Tsk, 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 you should know better. You cannot get in without paying admission. It's three dollars per person. You'll pay, won't you? Sure, I have no choice. So the first thing to do is to go inside the place, yo. To go inside of the museum and examine the things, because this is Antique Sword Show. Okay, let's see. Uh, here at the evening showing, we have the uh, Ram Raisin, the Thirds Casket, and we also have a Mumu. Before he joined the League of Legends, uh, he was known as Tartan Garmin's Casket, and he actually has a lot of other things, like a pencil box, and finally, the millennia old, if this man could move out of the way. The millen. I saw a chubby kid about your age here. He looked like he was awfully wealthy. He was being extravagant. And finally, we have the uh, lunchbox, and it is very exquisite. And to wrap this beautiful showing of millennia-old history brains, uh, we have the other caskets and the training bot. And then we have this exquisite man who is wearing antique uh, glasses made by Benjamin Franklin. Uh, mumble, mumble, why would Mr. Spoon from the Foresight Museum try to call me? I bet he just wants to brag about something. Well, let him try. I wonder what he wants to tell me. Bah, I dare him to try and upstage me. Oh, pardon me. I was just, uh, copying to myself. self. Uh, uh. Do -do 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 -do. Now that we've done that, we will go upstairs. Because we have an item that a certain man wants. This is a good man. We shall look at him. Who has the items? He has the tiny ruby, which its only purpose in the game is to be give it to this guy. This room is being remodeled, so I cannot show it to you. Ah, the samurai kid is here. Will he be giving me that gem? Gems. You're such a good student. I'm impressed by your passion for learning. Come in. Now, pro tip. What you want to do if you want to pull off a really cool glitch is to immediately run once you're in here. So, there will be two enemies. My goal is to fight the first one and avoid the second. It's hard to do, though if I do it, it will pull off an amazing glitch. So, I will go ahead and sadly uh, create a restore point. Because if I fail this, I need to be able to go back and easily try the glitch out. Okay, let's go in here. There are some caskets there. I'm not sure if they do different arrangements. I want to check that. Do they move? No, they don't. Okay. We need to fight the first enemy, then check that plaque, and then we should be able to get out without fighting the second casket. Very hard to do, though it is possible. Run! Okay, there's the first one. We will fight him. We cannot fight them both at once, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the Shattered Man is pretty easy if you just use the strongest PSI freeze attacks. And remember... Uh, we now have, have Pooh, who also has a PSI freeze. So we can we can do some damage here. Uh, PSI freeze beta on the Shattered Man, and we should be able to take him out in the first turn. If not, then I am very surprised. He's solidified. HP Sucker might actually finish him off. 
Didn't work. That's probably because his HP is so sticking low. And, wow, that wasn't enough damage? Oh, there it is. Okay. That was actually kind of surprising. I thought that Ness would never get, be able to do stuff. And this should be a super level up for Pooh. Hopefully. The enemy left a present. Inside the present was a mummy wrap. Ness took it. Ness's level is now 41. HP 1 by 3. PP 1 by 1. Pooh's level is now 19. Offense 1 by 1. Defense 1 by 2. Speed 1 by 1. Guts 1 by 1. Vitality 1 by 1. IQ 1 by 1. HP 1 by 11. PP 1 by 4. Pooh's level is now 20. Oh baby! Offense one up by five. Oh baby! Speed one up by four. Speed one by or uh, defense one up by four. Speed one up by two. Guts one up by one. Oh baby! Luck one up by three. HP one up by one. Pooh's level is now twenty one. HP one up by two. Pooh realized the power of PSI Magnet Alpha. Okay, let's try and avoid the thing. Pooh read the hieroglyphics. I think we did it. To fight against the invaders, we built this pyramid fortress. However, our efforts were futile, and we lost. Nonetheless. Our pyramid was protected by the gods of Scaraba. The invaders will be reborn every millennium and will attack again. Okay, I'm holding left. I'm not sure if that's right. Well, left, you get it. Okay, let's run. Even now, the invaders hide beyond space and time and built their evil stronghold. A place out of time is beyond the dark and is even further beyond the lost underworld. The deep darkness is shrouded. It is without light. Only one with the Hawkeye can piece, uh, pierce the dark. The Sphinx now watches over everything, waiting for the coming of a truly brave hero. Okay, holding left. Four, uh, two, three, four, five. Okay, holding left. Dance in front of the Sphinx. Okay, ready, set. We're doing it, we're doing it, okay. This is right. So that enemy is still there. He will not attack us. Um, because we're in the middle of text boxes. So we should be able to leave him there for the rest of the game, and after we finish the game, we can come back here, fight him. Now, spoilers for the end of the game, there are no enemies. You can go back throughout the world, talk to people, and, uh, and they say different things, which is really neat. But there are no enemies. But this enemy does stay here, so you can fight him and the game will glitch out, which I want to show off really badly. Ness, let's go to Scraba. The pyramid is the key. Run! Okay, okay, we're still we're still invincible, and even if he tries to attack us, we should go through the door. Wait one second, here's a picture of the hieroglyphs, Jeff's, for you. It is a reward for studying so hard. Ness got the hieroglyphic copy, hieroglyph copy. Use it in your human civilization class. Ha ha ha. There it is, we did it. The glitch is successful, which is good, because if I fail, then I would have to go back to that restore point. Okay, now we can leave with that enemy still there. The hieroglyphic copy is pretty much useless. I mean, it just it says the same thing, uh, so we don't need it. So the soonest, the next time I get to a phone, I'll just call Escargo Express and have them pick this up because it is useless. Okay, let's. Thank you. I didn't mean to get stuck in there. Okay, let's go. Oh, and here's the phone. The woman's gone, but the phone is ringing. Let's answer it. Hello? Is this Mr. Fork of the Scrava Cultural Museum? It doesn't sound like you. Well, I'll, pr I'll quickly tell you my story, because I'm busy, busy, busy. I found something so extraordinary that mere words could not do it justice. What do you mean by who am I? Don't you recognize my voice? It's me, Mr. Spoon from the Foreside Museum of Natural History. Look, Mr. Fork, I'm not exaggerating this find. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. It's outrageous. Click beep. Okay, so we should go check that out. And when I say we should go check that out, I do mean now. Let's have Ness use teleport alpha. And first, I would like to teleport to... Uh... To... Ah, uh, I can't go to... Dusty Dune Desert. That's upsetting. Well, I'll, I'll go to the next nearest place, Foreside. I would like to quickly cut over to Dusty Dune Desert because that caterpillar that gives a lot of experience, if I find just one of those, that should be the level up I need for Jeff to catch up to the group. So I'm going to find one of those, cut to it, and then we'll do the things that we need to do in Foresight. Okay, let's go. Whose level is now 22 in my search to find the caterpillar? Offense 1 by 2, defense 1 by 1, vitality 1 by 1, HP 1 by 12, PP 1 by 1. 
also in the search for the Caterpillar. Paulo's level is now 36. Offense one by one, speed one by one, vitality one by one, oh baby IQ one up by three, luck one up by two, HP one by eight. That rocks, PP one up by ten. Found it, found it, I found the caterpillar. Found it, I 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 found it. Okay, I purchased uh, a thing just for this. I got the skip sandwich, which will, I have no idea why I'm speaking in this accent. I already know what this accent is. Chase after the caterpillar. Get over here. <laughs> Thank you. Killed the caterpillar, yeah. This will be a super low, actually, no, it's not really. It's actually not that good. Who's level is now 23. Offense 1 by 2. Oh, baby. Defense 1 by 3. Speed 1 by 1. IQ 1 by 1. HP 1 by 3. PP 1 by 4. Okay. That was kind of worthless. Okay. Back to four side. It wasn't all for naught because this is another thing that I wanted to knock out while we're on the, the out and about. Uh, there's a camera guy location on the bridge between Dusty Dune Desert and Foreside, which I wanted to take care of. You have to walk here in order to get the picture. No buses allowed, or anything like that. It's on the bridge between them. Okay, now to Foreside. Ah, now that that ordeal of Elliot is over, I can get this other camera guy location in between the Monotoli building and the department store skyscraper is another location where he lands on the Monotoli building, which is interesting. But I did a couple things off screen because I thought that it was about time. First, I did a little bit of uh, reworking of inventories. Ness has some more ketchup packets because I'm still going to milk the magic truffle exploit. Uh, Paula, nothing much has changed. She just has the bag of Dragonite now. Jeff has, oh, actually Jeff has a big change. The HP sucker is gone on him because off screen I went to the Foreside or Forsidian uh, hotel and slept a couple of times. First of all, it's a terrible place to sleep because it costs $300 each time, but I still did it and I got the hungry HP sucker, which is identical to HP sucker, but it sucks up HP from all enemies. So, um, yeah, you can s it does the same thing just for multiple enemies at once. So you can pretty much just heal him to full health. So he has an AoE attack, which is fantastic. I, I don't hear enough praise from about this item, and I don't know why. Maybe it's bad and I don't know it. Uh, Pooh has not changed, except I need to bring his bottles of water to the top of his inventory because it gives him about 40 PP. All right, that looks, this looks good. So let's go to the Foreside Dinosaur Museum. And I need to remember to start my timer, which I did. The Foreside Museum. It's going to be identical in that I will have to pay to get in. The admission fee is $5 per person. Is that okay with you? Yes, it is. Please go in, you'll find an expert in the area of arts and sciences. So we're going to answer his call because he has something interesting. Now, we had gone in here when we were in Moonside, and it was much different. It was only one room, and it only had part of the dinosaur. But here's something that's interesting. This guy wearing... I don't even think that... No, that, I don't even think that's his hair. That looks like one of those food handler's caps, but I'm going to assume it's his hair. I wonder how many animals go extinct before human beings discover them. I want to see a live dinosaur sometime in my life. You and me both, buddy. Huge! Not you, I'm talking about the dinosaur bones. Yeah, they're pretty big. This museum should sell dinosaur t-shirts. Is the bones guy not here? Okay, whatever. Camera guy again, third time this episode. Pictures taken instantaneously, I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Okay, get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera, I'm ready. Um, say fuzzy pickles and also say exquisite. And now we will take the picture and I will fly away with my hat. Goodbye. <laughs> I still don't know what that voice is. Dinosaur bones believed to be from the southern Scaraba. Don't ask for any details, our research is continuing. Yay. I'm using my Toby voice. Do you want to know something extraordinary? 
Hmm. You know, there's a new singer named Venus at the Topella Theater. Could you bring me her aut autograph on an eraser? Then I'll show you something extraordinary. Oh, if you can get her autograph on anything, don't worry about the eraser. I don't care if the autograph is written on toilet paper. Do you mind if it's you were written on used toilet paper? Because I that may the only be the only thing that I can get her to sign on. The Topella Theater. We're going to buy a ticket. Sadly, the Runaway Five are not here, but Venus is. We saw her once in the game. She was with the Runaway Five in their final performance. But she didn't sing, oddly. She didn't do anything other than dance a little bit. Interesting, but that's what happened. I actually kind of wanted to talk to the owner. But here is Venus's performance. Oh, baby, baby! Don't make me hurt so bad. These guys are all stone cold gone for you. Ow! You cute thing. You, baby, sing to me. Sing to me only, baby. Venus, just sing and I can die a happy man, baby. I want to hold you tight. Venus, baby. Man, whoa. Poo hoo Venus, sob, sob. Man, people are really into her. Well, she's not any Runaway 5. I mean, I'm a boppin' and a, a beepin' to their tunes, but, mm, okay. I mean, you can't really beat the Runaway 5. But I really like that the guy tried to go on stage, and <laughs> I don't know what he was going to do to her, but it seemed that he had some intense because she was kind of frightened. Oh, you're a friend of the Runaway 5. Did you come to see Miss Venus? Come inside quickly. Don't let the other fans see you enter. So, like, she's the woman, and we're in her room. So, you want an autograph? Okay, I'll give you my autograph on this banana peel. Here you go. Ness got the signed banana. Oh, and this is a bonus. Smack. I, I can only assume she did not slap Ness. She, in fact, kissed him, because that makes the most sense. Also, it'd be really cool if I could use my bad key machine on this. But I'm pretty sure she just kissed Ness, so... Hmm, Paula's turning green over there. Alright, let's talk to this guy again, actually. I'm curious. Runway 5, okay. So, she's no Runaway 5, but she gave us an autograph and Ness a kiss to boot, and 
That blush is looking extra big and bright at the moment. Let's talk to this woman before I go, because she's interesting. I want to hear what she has to say. Okay, don't forget, life is money. I have lived that life. You can buy everything but love, friendship, and XP experience points. That's funny. Breaking the fourth wall, Earthbound. I like your style. Okay, let's go back to the museum. Give that man the signed banana peel. It's no toilet paper, but it is a banana peel. It's also not an eraser. Okay, banana, here you go. You got it. That banana peel has an authentic Venus autograph? Yep, there's no doubt about it. Now for my promise. I'll tell you something about- I'll, Oh wait, I need to remember his voice. I'll tell you about something extraordinary. In the next room, there is a light shining from far, far below the manhole. There, I found a huge monster rat. I'm not trying to pull your leg. I'm just trying- I'm- I'll just let you go and check it out for yourself. So, a shiny spot with a gigantic rat. That smells of one thing. That smells of not fun things. It smells like a rat. Or a fish. It's fishy, but it's also ratty. So the Foresight Sewers can be incredibly tough, no matter how you go about it. Filthy Attack Roach. My... well, the general consensus on the best strategy is to finish the entire place, and then go back, since the enemies will run away from you, go back and uh, get all of the presents, because the enemies are difficult, and they're not any that you need to farm up in order to be able to face. They're ones that you shouldn't face ever, unless you can get a guaranteed green swirl. So, I'm going to complete this area, and then go back and get the presents. I see- wow. That's a rare drop, I think. That is a 1 in 128 drop. I am 900% sure. The Pooh's level is now 24. Oh, baby. Offense 1 by 3. Defense 1 by 1. Speed 1 by 1. Guts 1 by 1. Vitality 1 by 1. IQ 1 by 2. HP 1 by 12. That rocks. PP 1 by 10. Pooh realized the power of Brain Shock Alpha. So, Brain Shock. Let's see. Uh, makes one enemy feel strange, so it's essentially PSI Flash, but not. Good to know. Okay, let's go in here. This is the easiest way to go through the sewers themselves, and... Oh, let's see, do we have time? We don't really have time. You know what? Yeah, I'm not going to push the end episode that far because I'm trying to make up for overused... Oh my, wow. Overused time where I made episodes too long. So I'm going to end it here, surrounded by enemies. Thank you so much for watching, and next time in Pal Plays Earthbound, we will be finishing out the sewers and skipping on over to uh, ba -da -ba, uh, da Dalam to get the Your Sanctuary location there. We are halfway through the game, but the game's going to fly by from here on out. I mean, it's going to go faster than it has before. We just got a Your Sanctuary location, now we're about to get another one, and another one next episode. So I'll see you guys then. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes, and I will see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound.